Welcome to the next video. Um, hope you guys are enjoying these videos. I have a lot of fun making these and explaining kind of um, some basic introductory pathology. Um, so I pose a question. What causes cells to become injured? There's eight main ways by which cells can become injured. Um, there are hundreds of ways that cells can, you know, really be become injured. They can become injured from a, you know, motor vehicle crash to one single um, gene mutation or DNA sequence change. So there, there are uh, really hundreds of ways that cells become can become injured, but it's described that there's kind of eight classifications, if you will, by which cells can become injured. And everything starts on a, usually on a cellular level, on a biochemical level. Um, you know, you have a cell and you have the nucleus and you have all the organelles inside. And, and you know, if you zoom in even farther, you know, you have, you know, clear down to clear down to the base, basic um, chemical structures of certain things. Um, you know, you have atoms and, and molecules and everything, and everything happens usually uh, on, on a biochemical, on a molecular level. And then over time, with time here, um, we start seeing changes. We first start seeing changes under a microscope and then later um, on a gross um, on a gross appearance. So what are the eight main ways? We will discuss um, each um, way or class of, of the ways that cells can be injured um, one by one. And the first one is ox oxygen deprivation. Um, in case of for those that don't that don't know, um, as we breathe in the air, oxygen um, is passed from our lungs into our bloodstream, and um, let's just say oxygen will come into here and it will bind to hemoglobin, which is in the red blood cells, and the red blood cells. This is a red blood cell. And the red blood cell will continue on down the pipe and through our down through our arteries and um, pass by the tissues and where it's sensed that oxygen is needed, it will kind of diffuse out of the bloodstream into some neighboring tissues where there's some cells and organelles. And oxygen will then diffuse through this membrane. And then on even on a larger scale here, this is just a larger scale of this, you know, you got oxygen um, coming through here. And inside the cell there's a there's a structure, an organelle that's called the mitochondria. And in the mitochondria, oxygen is used to produce ATP. This is the nucleus. Oxygen is used to produce ATP. And ATP is, I've said it several times now in, in the videos, that ATP is kind of the currency of energy for the cell. It's kind of uh, the way that the cell uses energy to perform its functions. We all understand that if the house, if our house, the lights, the power went out, in our neighborhood, we wouldn't have any way to cool our um, food in the fridge. Um, you know, that we wouldn't have, we couldn't, we weren't, we wouldn't be able to use lights or anything. So ATP is the way that the cells use energy, and we'll talk about all the ways that if we don't have ATP or if there's no oxygen delivering getting into these mitochondria and the mitochondria producing ATP, then we don't have any energy for the cell and the cell will undergo apoptosis, which is cell death. 
So we have hypoxia, which is, this is decreased oxygen to cells. And then we have ischemia, which is slightly different. And this is decreased blood to cells. And these are two main ways, two of the most common ways that cells are injured by oxygen deprivation. Is one is by decreased oxygen to the cells, which I just kind of talked about. And ischemia is decreased blood, so something's wrong with the tube here. You know, it's either pinched off or compressed, or there's some pathology or something wrong with the cardiovascular system that causes ischemia to the tissues. So not only does ischemia involve hypoxia, because the oxygen is getting, is getting carried through the bloodstream, but you also lose all the other nutrients and um, benefits of having blood pass through these tissues. You know, after the cell um, is working and performing its functions, it's also kicking off CO2. It's also kicking off wastes. And if we can't get rid of these um, byproducts, well, then they're going to clog up the system and they're going to be accumulating inside the cell or in the tissue surrounding it which would also cause havoc. So ischemia and hypoxia are the two main ways by which cells can be injured by oxygen deprivation. So the next two ways are chemical agents and infectious agents. Chemical agents are, are um, there are a whole slew of chemicals in this world that can cause um, problems with our cells, that can injure our cells. Um, we got, you know, drugs can cause damage to cells, uh, carbon monoxide. We can have um, anything we ingest that's, uh, that's not um, good for our body. Um, like the social stimuli um, of ethanol, which is alcohol, um, can also cause injury to our cells. Um, there's a whole slew of chemical agents that can cause damage to our cell cells. Um, infectious agents, we got bacteria, we got viruses, sorry, bacteria, we got viruses, we got protozoa, we got all kinds of infectious agents. There's a whole subspecialty of medicine called infectious disease and they talk about all the ways that we can, um, little bacteria and bugs can cause infections in our bodies and that can definitely kill some cells. The next two ways are immunological reactions so we all know someone that has a food allergy. Food allergies um, are when some type of food that usually is uh, not not reactive at all, our body thinks it's it's going to hurt us or it's foreign to us, and so it starts attacking it and it creates an immune, immune response to that certain food. Um, otherwise, it would have no effect on us, but for some reason, the immune system decides that it doesn't like that and we we can't eat that food or we have symptoms and problems. Um, we know that the immune system is very good at the, keeping our bodies healthy and destroying all these pathogens and antigens that will come in, into, our, into our bodies and such. But sometimes it, it, it does the wrong thing by attacking things that it shouldn't. There's also a whole class of um, arthritis that, are, um, that shouldn't exist, but they do because people's immune systems attack themselves. Um, genetic 
defects are also a common problem. Genetic defects, um, we've all known someone who has, has a baby with Downs, Down syndrome, um, any sickle cell anemia, sickle cell anemia. These are all defects from the genes and the DNA inside each cell. YouTube only likes 10 minute videos and so I'm running out of running out of time here so I'll go over the last three quickly. Nutritional imbalances are um, you know all the cells need nutrients to uh, perform their functions and if they don't have magnesium, uh, cobalt, vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin C, all these types of uh, uh, nutrients, then they won't they won't work right. And without these, then like I said, byproducts um, will will back up in the cell and that will cause problems. Physical agents are are any kind of traumas, radiation, anytime we go get x-rays, um, radi we're getting ourselves radiated and that's uh, definitely hurting some cells. Um, and then finally aging. And we can't live indefinitely and as cells age, um, we'll talk about this a lot. We'll talk all about all these in more detail um, but this is just kind of preview. So the eight common ways are aging, physical agents, nutritional imbalances, genetic defects, immunological reactions, infectious agents, chemical agents, and oxygen deprivation. These are the eight classes by which cells can become injured.